consumers. This is Hype Talk TV. I am your host, Alessandro, here with the most marketable, Richard Holiday. Hello, Richard Holiday. Hey, Alessandro, what's going on? What's up, man? So how you been doing? Uh, I'm doing good. I mean, considering the time, things are a bit odd. Um, you know, the universe is certainly taking a turn for the worse, but I'm making the best of it. And you're doing good, fine, right? Nothing bad has happened to you lately? Nothing like crazy or anything? Nothing crazy, no. Uh, life has slowed down for sure. And uh, it's all about maximizing the time that you have and being as productive as you can be. You're looking a little bit rough. You got some beard going on and everything. <laughs> I wouldn't quite call it rough. I would say it's a, uh, it's a new branding strategy I'm going for. Um, possibly bringing facial hair into the fold. We'll see how it works. Uh, I think I look fantastic with it. Um, every time I Snapchat a girl, they seem to love the uh, mustache that I have going on right now. So, you know. <laughs> so how's your bookings lately since this whole pandemic started? Well, uh, considering that wrestling is completely put on pause, I would say that they're doing as well as everybody else's, which is non-existent. Um, every show that I've had has been canceled and, and postponed. So really, I'm not even worried about it all too much in, in terms of, you know, the bookings that I've lost. It's just a matter of, hey, when is pro wrestling going to be coming back? That's the, that's the main concern. And that's uh, the objective. So, you know, nobody's wrestling right now. Yeah, unless you're uh, one of the bigger companies, but not even them. They're doing like tapings or whatever. Um, so let's start from the beginning. Uh, how did you become a wrestler? What was your first like realization that, oh, this could become a thing? Well, um, Alessandro, I will tell you that I, I have wanted to be a professional wrestler my entire life. That's probably the same answer that you get from everybody that you ask that question to. And <laughs> it's... You know, it's it's always been at the forefront of my mind. Um, I wanted to make sure that I received a degree um, before I ventured into professional wrestling. I felt like that was the educated route to do, and I'm very happy that I did that. Mm -hmm. but, you know, my entire life I wanted to be a pro wrestler. And your name for your rest, your stage name, is it your actual name, or how did you come up with it? That's my name. Wait, what? That's oh, it name. is awesome. Awesome. And I saw that you were an offensive lineman in college. That is true, correct? That is true, yeah. For what college was it? I played at the University of New Haven, and uh, I was uh, yeah, I was an offensive lineman. You would know that quite by looking at me now, uh, considering aesthetically I look fantastic. Uh, back then, I was a, a bit of a heavier individual, and you know, I, I played my position quite well. Uh, University of New Haven was a, was a powerhouse Division II school in NCAA. And I was quite the athlete for that position. But, you know, I, I, as time went on and, and pro wrestling started to become more prominent, I, you know, cut the weight. And you had a full ride there or how was uh, how did you like enter as a you got recruited? I was recruited there. yeah. Scholarship and all. Yes. And you got a bachelor's degree in marketing, correct? Yes, a degree in marketing for sure. At the same college. Uh, no, I actually ended up transferring and, and finished my degree at Southern Connecticut State University. I didn't want oh, that's to... cool. That's cool. So y your gimmick is basically your real life, basically. Like, it's all things that are actual and factual. Yeah, I don't really believe in gimmicks. I think, uh, you know, it's this is me. That's who I am. You know, I have a legitimate degree in marketing. It's, it's you know, I understand business. I understand, um, especially you know, that sector of, of business, which is marketing, which is the most important, in my opinion, especially in professional wrestling. So, no, there's no gimmicks here. There's no, I'm not playing pretend. I'm not pretending to be somebody that I'm not. These are all facts. This is how I live my life. So that's how you got all your puns and all your phrases in wrestling, like consumers, uh, rarefied air. How did you come up with those? Was that a part of your whole, like, real life situation or? Well, consumers is just, you have to really take a step back and think about it. That's what fans are you know people always use the, the term <laughs> fans. um but a, a fan is very a fan is very mild in the sense that you can it's a very broad range in how big or small you can be a fan uh, let me give you an example maybe somebody who likes baseball uh you know they're a fan of baseball you know it's like oh, yeah baseball's fine it's cool you know maybe i'll, I'll check it out or if it's on tv or you know i'll pass by 
and then there's fans of baseball that have season tickets. So mm-hmm. how do you so how do you really gauge, you know, what a fan is? But a consumer is putting their money into the market. Um, so I would wager to say that somebody who holds season tickets, they're a consumer. They're paying a lot of money to go to baseball. <laughs> they love baseball. They're a consumer. They're not really a fan. Fans are very you know, laissez-faire in a sense. Yeah. And rarefied air, how did you come up with that phrase? Well, I'm breathing it at all times. Um, when you're around me, you can feel that rarefied air. And being in rarefied air is something that distinguishes yourself from the common fan. And that is how I've always felt about myself. That's how I carry myself. When I speak, I feel like I am above you. Well, I know I am above you. So I'm speaking <laughs> air. So it's, again, it's, it's not a gimmick. It's a real life way of thinking. And is your father actually a lawyer? Yes. For real? What type yeah. of lawyer is he? And for real, if, yes. And you have to say it properly if you're going to say it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you, of course, love coffee. Uh, what's your favorite type of coffee to drink and from what place? Well, it depends on the time of the day. I always open up, open up the morning with a hot black cup of coffee just to set the tone. Then later on in the day, I'll usually venture out to Starbucks and get myself a venti ice americano. That's how I like it. And then around 5 p.m., I like to ease back a little bit and smooth it up and go with a latte of sorts. So I'll switch it up if I want to do a latte or a macchiato or possibly a cappuccino. But I like something a little bit warm for not only um, via the liquid, but also warm. And I feel like that's what those do. And no cold coffee, right? No cold brew? Well, I just told you that I have a venti iced Americano as my second coffee of the day. Oh, okay, okay. That's and, cool. yeah, of course. And I see that you get a lot of hate in wrestling, of course, because you're a heel uh, and your your personality is, like, out there and kind of, like, bossy and mean. Uh, what is the worst thing that anyone has ever told you, like a heckler in the crowd or anywhere, even through social media? Well, I don't really care about people that hate me. Um, and then on, on the other end, I don't really care about people that love me because at the end of the day, I go out there and I'm just who I am. You, you, when you see Richard Holiday on the screen, you're going to get who you're going to get. You know, you have every right to choose if you're going to love me or if you're going to hate me. I guess that's the beauty of professional wrestling. That's completely fine with me. At the end of the day, you're still. Uh, Wait, what did you say? It got cut off for a second. Hello? Can you hear me? Wait, what did you say? Because I couldn't. It got cut out for a second. What did you say? I said I don't really care if you love me or if you hate me. At the end of the day, you're still a consumer. You can be a hateful consumer or you can be a loving consumer. Uh, either way, again, you're still a consumer. So I, I just go out there and I try and and do what I do better than everybody else, and that is provide the ultimate consumer experience. Whether you love that or you hate that, well, that's your prerogative. In terms of the most hateful thing that somebody said to me, I don't even don't even register it. I don't even you zone out. I don't even process it. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter, honestly. <laughs> uh, and how did uh, MLW come across to you? Like, how did they reach out to you for a job? Well, I they first came to New York in July of 2018, I believe, and they were doing the Battle Riot, which is a 40 man rumble. And, uh, and mm-hmm. at the time, I wasn't a member of the roster. So they had reached out to me to be a member of the of the Battle Riot. And then I walked in the door with a custom-made suit, and I looked better than everybody else. And they said, well, we have to put this guy on TV immediately. And they gave me a tryout match called that. And I impressed so much that they brought me back in October. Mm-hmm. And then after that extraordinarily impressive showing, they offered me a contract right on the spot. And now I'm the biggest star in Major League Wrestling, and the soul is basically focused around me. So it's really funny the way the world works, man. You know, you just got to kind of pick and choose your opportunities. And aren't you the leader of Dynasty now? Yes. And how did that form? How did that came to be the whole Dynasty faction? Well, me, Maxwell, and Hammerstone were three individuals that just really believed in ourselves and knew that we were head and shoulders above everybody on that roster. So we came together and we decided to be the most talked about faction in all of professional wrestling, not just Major League Wrestling. That's exactly what we did. The dynasty has become synonymous with pop culture. The dynasty is is prevalent in all aspects of life. So I believe that we did our job in leaving the footprint in professional wrestling. 
And how is it like working with MJF, Alexander Hammerstone, and Gino Medina? How are they as we're people? All, and what, what? What did you say? We're all best, we're all best friends. And uh, MJF, has MJF ever told you any really good advice? Well, me and Max, we, we both share advice. You know, we both, we both worked off each other. Um, you know, there were some things that I was able to uh, teach him in terms of marketing. There were some things that he was able to teach me. And it was a really beautiful relationship. And uh, I love Max. And he's doing fantastic. And I wish him nothing but the best. And we still keep in contact all the time. Because like I said, everybody in the dynasty is best friends. Yeah, you guys seem like a cool clique. Um, and you, I saw that you were MLW Tag Team Champions with uh, MJF. How was that like? And that was your first ever major championship, right? Yeah, I would say that that would be the biggest championship that I've won in pro wrestling. And for me, it, it was just a culmination of everything that we said that we were. We were the best uh, team by far. Yeah. And we did that. And we went out there with the heart foundation that everybody thought was the best. And we proved time and time again that they were. We beat them in a two out of three falls match in Dallas, Texas. We beat them in a ladder match to win the championship in Chicago. We beat them in a main event match uh, in New York. So, you know, we proved that the dynasty was number one. And those tag team championships were representation of that. Yeah, you guys totally are one of the best factions in MLW right now. Um, and how is it like wrestling for TV? Well, I'm born and bred to be on TV. You know, the camera loves me. You could always tell that they're zooming in just directly on my face because they want to capture the money shot. And think about all the consumers that are at home, all the different demographics that are watching on TV and that tune in on YouTube. They want to see Richard Holiday. That's mm -hmm. why they tune into MLW. They want to see yeah. Dynasty, whatever it is that we're up to. So, you know, working for TV, it's just that's what I'm meant to do. And I saw that there was a couple rumors of you going to AEW. Was there any total facts, facts about it? or? You know, rumors are rumors. There's always going to be speculation in, in professional wrestling. Um, you know, consumers want to see me here. They want to see me there. Here's my advice to you. If you want to see me, tune into MLW every single week. You're going to see me. Heavily featured. And how do you cut a promo? Because you do promos really awesome. Like, it's crazy how good you are at promos. Uh, what's your mindset when you do the, the promo? I don't cut promos. I just talk. And... You know, if, if there's a certain objective that maybe I have to get across or if there's a certain scenario or subject matter or content, well, then sure, I'll include it. But at the end of the day, it's really just me talking. It's just me letting my personality come across on screen. I don't plan anything. I don't, you yeah. know, write, I don't write anything down. It's not written on the back of my hand. Uh, it's just me. I'm just unadulterated to me. And were you always like this uh, when you were younger, like your whole persona as yeah. a wrestler? Well, it's, like I told you, it's no persona. I, I always believed that the most successful pro wrestlers are just, yeah. you know. I ordered that bad, my bad. <laughs> when, when LeBron James goes on the court, he's not pretending to be somebody else. He's just LeBron James. When I enter yeah. a professional wrestling ring, I'm not pretending to be anybody. I'm just Richard Holiday. Exactly. That's how it's supposed to be. And your inspirations, uh, who did you look up to when you were younger and now, basic, and now too? Well, I mean, there's there's plenty of inspirations. I mean, in, in the confines of professional wrestling, I would say, you know, maybe just guys like The Rock. And it's not even because of what he did within pro wrestling. It's the way that he he morphed his brand into something bigger and better than, than what he ever imagined it could be. And I think that's the ultimate goal is just an ever-evolving uh, brand. And just continuing to grow and prosper and become better and better. So, to me, he's the ultimate inspiration. And any current wrestlers that you watch or anything? Um, I would say that the only current wrestler that I watch that I truly admire um, for his work would be Randy Orton. I, 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 I mm. truly believe that he is um, somebody everyone should, should watch and, and understand how good he is. And uh, But again, uh, I'm, a, I'm a perpetual believer in don't emulate innovate and don't just go out there and say well you know he does this so i'm going to do that uh -huh. you know, he, may, he may do that and that might work for him him or her and that might not work for me so i don't emulate i innovate i might look and appreciate but i don't ever emulate anybody that's that's good to to uh, know and any favorite matches of yours so far in your career 
Yeah, I would say when me and Max won the MLW Tag Team Championships in Chicago was one of my yeah. favorites. Um, another personal favorite of mine was uh, the Dynasty versus Von Erichs when we opened up for the first ever pay-per-view for MLW. Yeah, that was a wild one. And just knowing that MLW wanted the Dynasty to be the first people that consumers saw when that pay-per-view went live. Yeah. Um, the match went whatever, but it was just the fact that we were the first people Maxwell and myself that anybody saw on live pay-per-view that means a lot for them for their first ever pay-per-view and that's incredible for them because they went straight from like they when did they come up again they came up in 2017 right they they came back they came back from 2000 and something and they reestablished themselves as a major promotion again and yeah. uh, honestly I'm not sure I really don't even care it, I only care about <laughs> from my timeline on you just care about yourself and the dynasty, of course. And any dream matches uh, that you'd like to see in the future? Nope. nope. Uh, again, I'm not a dream match guy. That's not my style. Um, uh, I like situations. I don't really care about who I'm facing. Um, I would prefer to have matches that I feel would benefit me. So if there's an MLW heavyweight championship match in the future for myself, well, then, yeah. That's and it's not a dream match because I know it's going to be a reality. So I prefer if you, if you phrase them as reality matches as opposed to dream matches. Uh-huh. Uh, it would be more just so career career advancing matches. That's all I really care about. Exactly. And any future goals in five years? Uh, where do you see yourself, and what what do you see yourself doing? Well, I see myself just being a professional wrestler as well, and. You know, maybe it's with MLW still. Maybe it's just on, on the top guy in MLW for the next five years. Who knows? Um, that's the cool thing about pro wrestling is it's, it's ever evolving. It's ever changing. But my game plan stays the same. Just just keep growing my brand day to day. Continue providing the ultimate consumer experience every single time I walk through the curtain. Every single time I grab a microphone or every time I do a podcast like this. And that's it. Just continue to grow. Grow. Grow is a key word. Uh, any and by the end of your career, where do you see yourself? I see myself probably sitting on a private island, um, laying on the beach, looking at the water, and saying, "Wow, I really am the greatest pro wrestler to ever live." <laughs> and then my last two questions here: Why should people care about uh, Richard Holiday? Um, I, you know, I think just that's the type of question that really needs no answering. It's just like I said before: it's you're a consumer regardless. So yeah. whether you love me, whether you don't care about me, whether it is, you know, that whatever it is, it's just understand who I am and why I do this. And I think more often than not, I think a consumer is going to gravitate towards me a little bit more than, than other professional wrestlers, just simply because of what I bring to the screen and what I bring to a live event, unlike anybody else. So it's, I, I always believe that the consumer is always going to gravitate towards me regardless. That's, mm-hmm. why, that's why the most marketable moniker came about. Because I truly believe that I am the most marketable in terms of everything that you need to be successful in professional wrestling. And don't ask me what it means to be the most marketable. It's, if you don't know <laughs> about now, you don't know. Yeah, exactly. The most marketable. <laughs> and... Uh... Where can they find you at? What's your social medias? Uh, plug in your merch as well. All that. Uh, social media is at Most Marketable. That's on Twitter. That's on Instagram as well. Same handle. Uh, Pro Wrestling Tees has two great designs up right now. You can get the Consumer Box t-shirt or the AirPod God t-shirt. Either or. They're both great. I get both. But in terms of, excuse me, in terms of social media, that's where you can find me. And uh, any other merch? that you have like a patreon or anything like that no not at the moment i keep it relatively simple uh, okay okay so this has been hype talk tv your host here alessandro with the most marketable richard holiday uh and go check him out on mow every friday right correct friday or saturday saturday night saturday night at 10 or 8 or what time is it that you you're on 9 p.m and YouTube, I know for sure, because I watch on YouTube Saturdays at 6 p.m. Eastern time for me. And, yeah, this has been Hype Talk TV, and see you later. And thank you so much for giving your time, Richard Holiday.
See you later.